Hi guys, uh, welcome. If you're a newcomer, all the more welcome. And uh, the rest of you, welcome back. Um, I have made a very, very important discovery and I just want to share it immediately because you never know when I'll kick the bucket and I don't want to die with this information. I have found an actual way to make the wheel turn indefinitely and do so with lots of torque. And that torque is key because without the torque, just because somebody can get this turning doesn't mean it has any value. It's got to be able to hold up against lots of coils because once you put the coils on this for wire to tap this for the energy and then you start pulling energy from it, it causes uh, the mechanics of a given generator to start slowing down. That's why when you hear a gasoline-powered portable generator, the moment you start drawing power from it, the gasoline motor suddenly kind of stutters for a moment as it readjusts to keep up with the demand. So you have to have torque and lots of it. So what I'm about to show you, when I put this real close, there's lots of torque. I also can feel the torque in the wheel. Now I'm holding my phone by hand, so what I'm about to show you, I'm limited to what I can do here. But I wanted to show you nonetheless. Watch this. What is going to happen, let me tell you what's going to happen here. What I discovered was that if the angle of this changes just a little bit, not much, see that isn't much, look the wheel's already trying to go, but if you just tank it and angle this a little bit like that, it changes the dynamics of what happens here. It changes the dynamics so much, it causes the wheel to go perpetually until of course the magnets wear out. So I don't believe ever, none of this will ever achieve perpetual motion. It's just not possible. Because magnets wear out and this stuff here will wear out. So watch this, okay? Let me open up the view a little wider. I guess it is a wide open view, okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get this going here a little bit, okay? I'll put this kind of close, now watch this. I turn this in phase as it moves back, then I move this back for the next round, move it back, okay? And actually this will start going faster and faster and faster if I time this just right. So, as you can see, this will go. There are no tricks here, this is real. All because I just changed how this magnet is in phase or out of phase with the armature magnets. Forgot to turn it back, okay? Turn it like that. Oops, I was kind of late. You gotta start turning it immediately as soon as it comes through. So what's gonna happen here to tap this, to make this really work, is that we would tap the middle of the wheel here with the mechanics, just like an old-fashioned steam engine, have an arm, and the arm would come out and it would manipulate another um, wheel or device, whatever you wanna call it. And in doing so, we can then, in turn, when this is 180 degrees out of phase, this will be here. And then when the wheel comes around back in phase, this will reset to here. Then as it comes around, it'll go back to the phase, the 180 degree phase over here. So we're going to use the torque from the center, which is a lot of torque, to move this back and forth. Now, this is on this motor here. And this it's not supposed to be, it's just a prop. So there's a lot of drag here from the bottom of this motor. And still, even though there's drag, it's not taking a whole lot of energy to do this. Okay? So when I get this set up on something that moves freely, on some kind of independent armature setup, or axle, I guess I should say, then this is going to move with the greatest of ease. I mean the greatest of ease. So it's not going to take much energy or torque it's not going to subtract much torque from the wheel to get this to move. So if we do this, we can have it so the torque from the center of the wheel makes us move properly at the right moment, and then repeat the process here, 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 or however, whatever the spacing will be. I'm not sure because you can only put these so close together, but um, we'll have to see. And this is basically is going to kind of act like a... Um, I forgot what you call it in a car engine. I want to say camshaft, but it's not correct. Um, anyway, I can't remember. It's not important. But the thing is, is that we will get this 
So when this moves, it'll move pump in and out. And as it pumps in and out, it will cause something here to turn that'll cause this to move back and forth. They'll be in perfect synchronization with this. This is worth chasing. If I really can get this mechanics of this center with plenty of excess torque left over to move this exactly correctly, then we have a game changer. We have a true game changer. I mean, this is just so simple. And I've never seen anything on the web like this. None. Maybe we will now. But um, today is the 13th of March of 2023 when I made this discovery. Okay, and I'm James Roney of James Roney Staters. I believe what we see here is a game changer. I really, really do. Because we have the two important components. We have lots of torque. And we have a very simple mechanical way to make this move without being fancy or complicated. So, as you can see, as I've brought it out of phase, it went through just fine. I'm gonna bring it a little closer. Yeah, boy, that really picks up speed there. If I get it too much closer, I'm not gonna be able to hold this back because this is powerful. Wow, look at that, oh my gosh, look at that. Whoa, boy, that's really flying now. Good Lord. I guess if I get this timing right, the, the better I get the timing, the faster it's gonna go. That's really big in speed. Wow. Anyway, I truly believe this is a game changer. I really do. Anybody else who doesn't chase this, they're nuts. Because I truly believe we have everything we need here. We have plenty of torque. And we'll tap some of that torque and bring that torque out here to manipulate this thing back and forth. And since it'll be mechanically locked into the wheel, it will perfectly make this in perfect timing. Because all you have to do is make it so that when this magnet gets about here, this has come back to the set point. So right about there. Right there. I can feel it pulling. So this needs to have returned by this time. And then by the time the magnets get to here, by halfway through, this needs to have already started to turn. And it's not gonna, it's gonna be easy. It's not gonna be anything to it. Coming up with the mechanics and the parts and cutting pieces out and I don't have a metal shop. We'll see what happens here. I'm really gonna have to jerry rig this just to prove a point that this will work. But that's all I have to do. No matter how I have to do it, if I just use a, Popsicle sticks all glued together. I don't care how I do this. Just as long as it works, we're fine. And then, of course, then we can take it to a new level and um, get a, a, a metal shop, machine shop to make me parts that we really need. But this is a game changer. And there's no shielding required. I've not abandoned my shielding yet because we might be able to um, gain even greater torque if we shield the back side of this. So shielding is not off the table by any means. I believe in my discovery, uh, how my James Running Staters work is a monumental discovery and highly important. Despite one idiot on the web decided to make a video that says uh, magnetic shielding is not the holy grail. Well, if you go find that video, it, it would, his test results were faked. He didn't put any insulation between the, the magnet and the metal because the way my staters work, there's three layers and it's a space in, in between each layer so he just takes uh, the magnet and puts it straight onto the metal and then uses a, a metal detector and says nope this is not the holy grail i think he's one of those people who debunks stuff on purpose I, I we didn't know until recently how deeply involved many of the government agencies patrol these groups and channels and stuff. I think I might now know why a lot of my videos were disappearing and why a lot of my other channels now got deep six or something you all don't know about yet. I don't want to get into it here, but here here nor there, uh, I had seven total YouTube channels and a couple and a few other uh, social network channels and all on the exact same day. Same day. They all got deep sixed. So this is my new setup. And... Um, We'll get busy now. This room used to be full of boxes. I mean, it was full of this. It was 
stacked big time. You could hardly walk around in here. So now I have my own space now to get things done. Alrighty, um, I'm gonna splice here at the end. If I haven't already spliced it in the video somewhere, of uh, a really cool angle that's working really badass. All right, thank you everybody. Take care.